The Dream Chaser was supposed to mark a new chapter for NASA's cargo deliveries to the International Space Station, a reusable space plane capable of landing on runways like a commercial jet, offering flexibility that no other vehicle in the fleet provides. It's sleek, ambitious, and has been in development for years, riding on the promise of finally expanding NASA's options beyond capsules. Yet, as with most bold aerospace projects, the gap between concept and reality has been filled with delays, technical hurdles, and shifting timelines. Now the focus has shifted to a very specific problem, its wings. These aren't cosmetic parts. They are essential to Dream Chaser's entire design, the defining feature that allows the craft to glide back through Earth's atmosphere and land on conventional runways. Without them, the spacecraft can't fly, can't re-enter as designed, and certainly can't deliver cargo for NASA. Reports suggest that the wings have become a bottleneck issue, one that pushes the program off schedule once again, leaving NASA in an uncomfortable position as it scrambles to keep its resupply chain stable. And that's where the story turns critical, because this isn't just about a cool-looking space plane missing a launch date. NASA depends on Dream Chaser as part of its cargo strategy for the ISS, and every setback ripples outward into mission planning, budgeting, and international commitments. Make sure to subscribe now so you don't miss breakdowns of innovations in the space industry. It's been more than 20 years since Dream Chaser first entered the public eye, originally as a concept under a small company called Space Dev. The idea was simple but daring a miniaturized space shuttle that could do what capsules could not, land on runways, return delicate experiments safely, and provide a flexible alternative for NASA. When SpaceDev merged with Sierra Nevada Corporation in 2008, the design finally began to mature. By 2010, NASA saw enough promise to provide funding through its commercial crew program, sparking years of engineering work, design refinements, and testing. What started as a bold idea slowly transformed into Sierra Nevada's flagship project, backed by taxpayer dollars and high expectations. But Dream Chaser's road has been anything but smooth. While capsule-based spacecraft like SpaceX's Dragon and Boeing's Starliner followed more conventional development paths, Dream Chaser pursued a winged design, instantly setting itself apart but also complicating the process. NASA had already lived through the complexities of operating a winged vehicle with the Space Shuttle program, and those lessons highlighted both the advantages and the risks. Runway landings are efficient, but they demand far more stringent engineering work. The result was that Dream Chaser, while attractive on paper, quickly found itself facing longer timelines than its capsule competitors. NASA initially passed on selecting it for crewed missions in 2014, labeling it as less mature compared to Dragon and Starliner, though the agency left the door open for cargo services. That second chance came under NASA's Commercial Resupply Services II contract, which guaranteed Dream Chaser a series of uncrewed cargo flights to the International Space Station. At least six missions were locked into the manifest, with the spacecraft's very first flight planned as a demonstration known as CRS Demo-1. Optimism was high. Initial schedules pointed to a 2021 debut. Yet the launch date has been repeatedly pushed back, slipping year after year as critical issues in certification, propulsion, and integration piled up. Now, we're halfway through 2025, and the long-awaited debut is still nowhere in sight. The frustration surrounding Dream Chaser isn't just limited to delays. The program has become a symbol of how difficult it is to develop a spacecraft outside the capsule mold. Space fans and industry observers have watched milestones inch forward at a glacial pace, and each slip in the schedule has chipped away at confidence. Even NASA's own ISS program managers have acknowledged the sheer difficulty of bringing a space plane like this to life, pointing to certification hurdles in software, propulsion, and safety systems. Every one of those elements has to work seamlessly before Dream Chaser can be cleared for flight. And yet, despite the setbacks, NASA and Sierra Space remain invested. The agency needs diversity in its cargo fleet, and Dream Chaser represents capabilities no other spacecraft offers. 
A runway landing vehicle could prove invaluable for returning time-sensitive science experiments or critical hardware. For Sierra, it's not just about meeting contracts, it's about proving that a winged spaceplane still has a place in modern spaceflight. That belief has kept the project alive through decades of redesigns, delays, and financial strain. The big question now is whether Dream Chaser can finally overcome the challenges that have defined its history so far. But the real problem today isn't Dream Chaser's decades-long history of delays. It's that one critical piece of the spacecraft, the wings, is in serious trouble. And that single issue is now threatening the entire launch timeline. Unlike capsules, Dream Chaser depends on its wings to survive re-entry and perform the precision landing that makes it so unique. Without them, the spacecraft is just a heavy shell with no way to safely glide back to Earth. That's why the wings aren't just another subsystem. They're the very definition of whether Dream Chaser can ever function as advertised. The design of these wings was always going to be complex. They're not simple fixed surfaces like you'd see on an aircraft. Dream Chaser's wings fold during launch, so the vehicle can fit inside the payload fairing of United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur rocket. Only once in space do they extend outward, locking into position and preparing for re-entry. This folding mechanism introduces countless engineering challenges, from ensuring the hinges survive extreme vibrations during ascent, to guaranteeing that the deployment system works flawlessly in orbit. On top of that, once deployed, the wings need to endure brutal heating during atmospheric re-entry, while maintaining aerodynamic stability for a controlled landing. It's a problem with no margin for error. If a wing fails to deploy, or if heat shielding on it proves insufficient, the entire spacecraft is lost. Originally, Sierra Space contracted the Italian aerospace firm Dimos, and then later brought in aerospace manufacturer Lockheed Martin to help design and build the wings. But repeated setbacks emerged. Testing revealed weaknesses in thermal protection at the joints, structural flexibility under aerodynamic loads, and integration issues with the fuselage. Each time a problem was discovered, it required redesigns and new rounds of testing. By 2024, insiders were already warning that the wings had become a bottleneck for certification, and NASA's own inspectors flagged them as one of the riskiest elements in Dream Chaser's flight readiness review. What was meant to be an elegant folding wing solution was now looking more like the Achilles heel of the entire spacecraft. The delays created by these issues have spiraled outward into the broader launch schedule. Dream Chaser's first mission CRS Demo-1 was originally set to ride Vulcan's second certification flight in 2023. That launch date slipped first into 2024, then to early 2025. And now Sierra Space has openly acknowledged that Demo-1 will not happen this year. The culprit continued trouble with wing qualification and heat shield integration. ULA's Vulcan is sitting ready with payload capacity, but without certified wings, Dream Chaser can't be stacked, integrated, or flown. This means NASA's carefully balanced cargo schedule for the ISS has been thrown off, forcing greater reliance on SPACEX's Dragon for urgent resupply. The stakes here are larger than one company's technical troubles. NASA has a vested interest in ensuring it has at least two cargo providers at any given time so that the loss or delay of one does not compromise ISS operations. SpaceX may be reliable, but the agency does not want to be entirely dependent on a single provider. Boeing's Starliner is still fighting through its own crewed flight struggles and does not provide cargo capability. Northrop Grumman's Cygnus has been steady, but cannot return cargo to Earth. Its vehicle burns up in the atmosphere after each mission. That leaves Dream Chaser as the only promised runway landing, cargo returning alternative, which is why NASA is still deeply invested in its success despite the endless setbacks. The wings, therefore, are not just Sierra's problem. They are a NASA problem, too. Dream Chaser's wings highlight the inherent complexity of space planes. While they promise runway landings and flexibility, folding wings are necessary to fit modern launchers and introduce technical challenges capsules avoid. 
SpaceX's Dragon bypassed these issues with a simple blunt body design, making NASA's 2014 decision to prioritize capsules for crew transport look increasingly justified as wing delays continue to hold up Dream Chaser's cargo missions. Sierra Space continues refining the wings with reinforced joints and new thermal protection, but as of mid-2025, certification is still pending. Until the wings are fully flightworthy, no mission can occur increasing NASA's reliance on Dragon and stretching ISS logistics. The wings, once Dream Chaser's defining feature, are now its biggest obstacle, making the next phase of testing decisive for whether the spacecraft can finally move from concept to operational reality.